smaller group earlier, and I'm happy to tell that um, I'm very weak in the kind of theory, the deep theory of, of statistics, and I'm interested in learning more, but I do have some experience in what we call data wrangling. So, you know, getting data from different formats, combining different data sets, grouping, um, analyzing, and I'm also very interested in um, what some people call Science 2.0, um, how do you use these tools more efficiently, both in your own work, but also in collaboration with a small group, when you're sharing it with a much, even the, even the whole world. So, uh, first, for those who haven't seen it, I want to just talk very briefly about our studio. Um, if you are using R, in my opinion, it is uh, kind of a given. It has so many advantages, and it's open source and free, so, and it's completely 100% compatible with R. It's just, it's a window into R, so you can write a script here, and someone else who's not using RStudio can still run it. Um, but, for example, I can, uh, it has tab completion, right? So you see here, uh, it tells me what these commands do. It tells me what the parameters are, because a lot of the, you, you, a lot of the R commands have a lot of different uh, parameters that you, you can't remember very easily. You can always click F1 and you get help. So you see here I can very quickly pull up the help for any command, including all the libraries that you add. As long as you load that library, it's available for you. Um, you can very easily pull in uh, data and pull it in. You can see all your entire environment here. So if I say A equals 1, then suddenly here you see a list of my environment right now here. A, it's one, right? And so you, as, as your script is running, you can see that changing. Um, you can see your files, you can see your history. Um, you can install packages and so on. So that's the basic, I mean, there's lots of tutorials and stuff like that, but if you're not using our studio already, I would recommend you to have a look at it. But then the two specific things I wanted to kind of show you guys, which, um, the people in my group indicated might be interesting, is Knitter and Shiny. Um, and to start with Knitter, I want to start just by saying two words about Markdown. Does anyone here know what Markdown is? Does anyone here know what LaTeX is? So LaTeX is um, a way of writing papers um, instead of using words. So you write pure text with lots of weird codes, but if, if you're using a lot of formulas and if you want it to be really nicely typeset, it's um, great. Um, so it's very much used in computer science and some of the harder sciences. Um, I find it uh, very hard to read. Uh, it's powerful, but it's like you, if someone gives you a LaTeX manuscript, it's quite confusing. So Markdown is basically a way to write rich text um, with some simple markup very easily. Okay, so this is a, a busy big markdown editor just to give you a sense. So if I want to do a headline, I just do like this. And this is some text, bold, okay, that's italic, and italic. Okay, this was invented, um, so let's say I want to make a table, name, address, the, um, Right, and this is actually this is HTML. Okay, so Markdown was invented as an easy way to write HTML pages because it's much easier than handwriting HTML. But it's also it avoids all the problems with copying from Word or you know all that kind of stuff. Right. So if I want to insert a link, so let's say I want to have uh, my web page, I can do like this and say. Now a link. Okay, it should be. okay, now it's a link. All right? Or I can have uh, a footnote. So now we have a footnote. And you can click there and it jumps there. Right? So it, it has a lot of really nice functionality, even though it's, and the idea is that it should, you should still be able to read this. It kind of just looks like an email. That was, that was the motivation. Okay, final thing, I'm just gonna insert a picture. Okay, so it just posted a URL. That's the basic of Markdown. It's used very widely on web pages. There's a ton of different scripts that can take Markdown and make it into web pages or even into Word documents and stuff. Based on that, people said, hey, this is pretty neat. What if we can mix this with R code? 
and this is what knitter is. And the idea is that you knit together uh, the code and the text. Okay, so so you go to a new file R Markdown, and this is uh, and it, it gives you a little bit of. So I'm going to make this window bigger. So this is just text, right? You can. This is going to be bold, um, and this is R code. I can also, by the way, insert formulas, and that just uses the LaTeX markup. So I can insert a formula there. Now, what do you, this does, cars. This is a built-in R data set, which you might know, and it just does a summary and it plots it, right? If I want to see what that does, I can just run it right now, which is command enter, which you might know. And so that's a summary, and this generates a plot, which we see down here. Okay, so that's just like running normal R code. But what I can do now is I can say I'm going to knit this HTML, and it generates a nice web page, right? T title, text, link, the formula that I just pasted in. Here you see the code. Here you see the output. Some more text, the, the graph. Uh, so I'm gonna. So this was kind of the background. Now I'll show you uh, an example that I actually did. So this is um, a project that I did um, at at the University of Toronto, where we were. Um, and this is a survey that we that we got about 650 undergraduate mm -hmm. students in history and religion. So I needed, and it was like on paper. Uh, so I got a bunch of people to help me enter it, and I just created these simple Excel sheets. And as I want to load this survey. And one thing I, that I think, you know, based on my experience, is really helpful is what I want to do, because I really believe in a reproducible workflow. Um, I, if, let's say someone made a mistake in the, Excel, uh, in the Excel file. I could go into their Excel file and fix it. But I prefer not to do that. I prefer to fix it in my script, because I want to keep the Excel file untouched, because it means I can always go back, and I can also see very clearly what I'm doing. It's documented. Whereas if you fix something in an Excel file and you save it, you never know what you fixed. Maybe you made a new mistake, right? So in this script, I just read in all their Excel files directly. I do a little bit of cleanup here. Um, then, you know, take out... Uh, this is just really boring stuff you always have to do. Take out the NAs, convert spaces, depending, right? This is another thing I do. Because as you see in the Excel sheet, it's just, I just, for easy, I just put in the question numbers. But when you're graphing, it's kind of annoying to see question 14. So I store all the question numbers as metadata. Um, also the groups. So the use of social media are these questions. Okay, I store all that as metadata to the object. And then I say, I just use the save function to save um, an R object. Because what that means is I start with the Excel spreadsheets that people gave me. I haven't touched them. And then I run this once, it generates that save file. But I could run this as many times as I want. If someone else says, oh, I found another 100 questionnaires, I've just processed them. I just run this once more, and I'm done. Then I have the save file, then I have a separate script that actually does the processing. Because I might want to write three or four different reports based on that process data. So by separating those steps, it actually makes it a lot easier. And by having both the data and the metadata in that um, blob, you make sure that it doesn't go out of sync. Because what if I, in my visualization script, put in that question 14 is this, and then later I go back and, and then there's a new question and so on, right? So just something I found useful. So once you have loaded the survey, you start writing the report. So this is just a start. I'm loading libraries and stuff. I'm also turning off because this was actually a report I'm giving to someone, so I don't want them to see all the code. Usually seeing the code is great because you can see exactly how you got somewhere, but in this case, I turn off all of that stuff. Here you see another feature. Usually you have in this block, you have the code, but you can also embed code right in the text. So instead of saying, let's see how many students there were, and going and checking and typing 314, I just say n row db, number of students. So that, again, if you come with 100 new questionnaires, I just press play, and it's every single number here is up to date. If I want to run this report, and this is going to take a little bit longer because there's a ton of different uh, graphs. You see here in the window that it's um, generating all the graphs, and it'll complain if it's... So again, the advantage of doing this, when I type knit, it starts from a clean environment. 
Okay? It doesn't look at any of the variables you've already created, not any of the libraries you've already loaded. The advantage of that is that when you're playing around, you know, things might work, but then you take away that line of code and it still works because it's in the memory. Whereas if you type init and it actually works, it means it's going to work tomorrow when you reboot your computer. <laughs> That's actually very important, right? So here you see the report. Um, I've got different kinds of graphs, um, right? Just, and I have all these text. But, I mean, there's yeah, simple, but this is now something that I can give to someone. I can generate a PDF. I can put it on the website. If I want to open this in my browser, I click here. Now it's in my browser. It's just an HTML page. The nice thing about it too is that it's actually it takes all the images and embeds it in the HTML file. So this single file, if you email it to someone else, they'll open it, they'll see it. It's, you don't have to zip all the images together. And there's, you can also, if you click here, it says publish. If you do that, it ends up on something called RPUB, which is run by um, RStudio. So it's basically a public gallery of RStudio of these documents. And it's a really fun place to browse. Um, Unfortunately, I've actually written to them about this. There is no categorization because some of these are amazing. Like some of these are really great walkthroughs that are great for learning, and some of these are people just doing their homework because their professors actually ask them to use this. Uh, but you know, you can just click on anyone, and you can see someone showing you, and they're showing you the the how they did it. They're showing you the graph. So for me, I learn a lot better like this. So this idea of mixing code and markdown is actually becoming very popular and. Another example is uh, the IPython notebook, and that's specifically for using Python. Um, they have an amazing gallery um, with, they even have like full, full on textbooks in statistics, in network analysis. So here you see exactly the same concept. So you have this code, you have graphs, you have markdown. So, uh, and people are now publishing their whole academic papers, which I love. Because when people say, we did this, and I'm like, how exactly did you do it? And what parameters did you use? That's what I want to know. So the other thing I want to uh, show you is how to expose uh, dynamic statistics from our to other users. Okay? So usually, you give people pictures. Here's a picture. Here's a graph. Um, and what we're becoming more and more used to is being able to drag a slider and say, well, how does that look at P0.05? What about 0 0.04? Or what if I combine it with this variable and I group on that thing? And you're like, man, <laughs> you know, what, what are you expecting from me? Uh, but R actually has some really nice uh, facilities built in for that. So this is another example. This is a survey. This is a Google form survey that I did um, in a big class that I teach here at OEC with my supervisor with 85 students. So, they're coming in, and we want to both do a survey because of research needs, but also we want to get a quick sense of who's in the room, what are their interests, how can we group them. So you might have used Google Forms. Uh, it's very easy to design a form. And the nice thing is that the data just flows into a spreadsheet. So of course, the first step is to um, write another R script that takes the CSV file and cleans it up. And we store the file just like this is my usual pattern, right? So I save the file. Now, the nice thing about this is I set up the survey the night before. I typed in one single row of answers. I wrote this script, and the script was ready so that the next day when I got the students' answers, I could just click play, and I got it working. And then I could feed it into the next step, which is Shiny. So Shiny is this framework uh, interactive R graphics. And it's actually developed by the people behind RStudio. And it's a little bit tricky to, uh, to get going, but they have a lot of examples that you can basically copy and paste. And our service uh, consists of a server where you define uh, the interface. So basically, I'm just saying I want a server, and I want to plot some groups and stuff, depending on what the person chooses. And then the UI is saying, here's we have a, a two panels. The way you run it. The easiest for me is actually running it from the terminal. I think open the library, signing, and yeah, and then I just say run app, and I'm not now in the directory that has server.r and ui.r. So this is the simple interface. I can select an item. So for example, this use of technology. Then we can group it by 
these demographic variables. So if you want to group it by gender, the point, the, the important part here is not exactly what I did. This might not be interesting to you, but the point is that this is arbitrary R code. In any graph or non-graph that you can produce in R, you could put in here. And the example of non-graph is I also did a cross tab, which is just like a summary, right? Like a tab. So you don't have to even use graphics. And and the important thing also is that all of these are rendered on on demand. So none of this is pre, it doesn't pre-generate every possible graphics. It actually sits in the background and if you ask for a certain uh, thing, it'll just run the code just like you were sitting in R. Yeah, right. This is literally all the code that came into making that. And for gen rendering, this is like one line because I've already written all the code to render for my report. So I just reuse that code. It's very simple. Shiny um, showcase. Um, so you can look at some really advanced examples. I'm not sure what they mean by super zip, but you can look at you know college education. I think they're trying to look at where the leads live or something. You have uh, movie explorer. Here you see these sliders. So if I want to see uh, the one that has three Oscar movies, okay, and then you can move over. So 